Well, it's always good to be back in the Forbes building with my very favorite capitalist. You know, you and I have sat here at this table and discussed many, many things, and I've, I've always wished my readers or the people that watch our movies could have sat in on some of those, so I'm so excited uh, they get to meet my uh, friend and hero and uh, everything today. So thanks for being with us, Steve Forbes. It's good to be with you, and uh, it's really the other way around. I get to uh, get my insight and wisdom and then uh, peddle it in Forbes magazine. Well, hey. So it's it, called recycling, and I sell it, it back to you. Anything you can do, and it's probably worth recycling, and it's what they do with trash. But uh, <laughs> um, why do you think most people in the world, if they were instantly given three wishes of anything they want, virtually everyone will pick money for one of those? So why, why do you think that is? Well, it's, it's, it's human nature. Money means you can do things. You don't have to make your mind right away about what you're going to do with the money. So it opens up a whole host of possibilities. So instead of getting three wishes, if one of the wishes is a lot of money, you can maybe get thousands of wishes before you run through it. True. What, what do you think is the, the biggest misconception about money? Uh, money is seen uh, sort of like piles of gold or jewelry. Right. And uh, people don't realize that uh, money comes out of people doing transactions with one another. Uh, Steve Jobs invents, uh, comes up with the iPod. So you want the iPod, uh, you give Steve Jobs money, he gives you the iPod, and what does he do with the money? He may pay salaries, buy parts, uh, expand a, f a facility. So money isn't a thing in and of itself, even though we denote it with, used to do with coins, then paper, now with uh, computer glitches or whatever. Now it's a means of, of making it easy to do transactions. Just to give you a crazy example, if 3,000 years ago I sold an ad in Forbes magazine, what would I get in return? Probably a herd of goats or something. Right. Then I'd have to figure out how do I trade these goats to get uh, uh, PCs or Macs for the writers at Forbes. Just very, very cumbersome. Uh, with money, uh, we do a transaction. You make the choice what you get in return for that transaction. So I go to a restaurant. I want the food restaurant that takes my money and what they do with the money they can do a whole host of things so it, it facilitates doing things with each other right. you know I think most people uh, think money is going to make them happy or they think money is going to bring them all these things and and in reality when I think when you look at the basic things that make us all happy uh, the last statistics I saw is uh, somewhere beyond fifty thousand dollars in the United States uh, money doesn't make you necessarily more happy. In fact, uh, for a lot of people, it, it, you know, it, it uh, buys you a ticket into a game where you realize there's even more that you don't have, and you realize there's more that you don't have. And I think having all the money in the world is great if you learn to have a certain satisfaction that goes along with it. I mean, nobody wants a, a lot of pictures of dead presidents. We, you know, there's got to be something we want to do or have or be or give or something with that money, or otherwise it's just you bought into the the disease of more and uh, you never get there and uh, part of it too is how you got the money if you are an entrepreneur who's done something well money means you've uh, provided a product or service that uh, other people want so you're getting uh, resources in return and uh, it's not a matter of having more than three meals a day or five meals or whatever satisfies you right it's how you reinvest those resources uh, like Warren Buffett, uh, long ago he had more than he could ever use in terms of a material sense, but by reinvesting smartly, increasing uh, capital, he made it possible for pension funds to increase in value, shareholders to have increased value, companies to be able to expand. So uh, it was applied purpose, and that's the key thing. One of the things uh, that uh, profit companies, for profits, our publisher pointed this out and others have made the point, is that uh, they can learn something from the nonprofits in the sense of what is your purpose? What is your mission with this business? And if you have a purpose, then uh, money, money will come if you uh, achieve that purpose. What responsibility do people of wealth have? Are, are we our brother's keeper? I mean, are the problems of the world our problems? Well, I think one of the good things about free markets is they end up enabling people to uh, get ahead, enabling people to uh, go beyond the mere necessities of life and begin to be, be able to make choices in life. And so if you're good at uh, a certain business, good at a certain product or service, uh, that's your purpose in life, go, go pursue it. And you'll do a lot more good than doing something where you don't have that uh, particular ability. 
And, but that at some point, if you've been uh, privileged to accumulate r real resources, then at some point you have to decide what to do. I remember asking Warren Buffett, uh, why did he decide to uh, do what he did in terms of charitable giving? Uh, why didn't he continue to uh, reinvest the uh, capital he was uh, accumulating? Because he is so good at it, right. and therefore was doing the world good. And he said, well, when his wife was alive, he always assumed, his wife's name was Susan, that right. Susan would uh, outlive him, as women uh, often do in marriages, right. and uh, that she would do the giving. He would do the making, and she, in effect, would do the giving. Well, she, sadly, she predeceased him, and so suddenly he was faced. Okay, what do I do now? So we uh, searched around, and he's a very thorough individual, disciplined man, and uh, was impressed with what his friend Bill Gates was doing in terms of doing, trying to do original things for problems around the world, certain diseases and the like. So the bulk of his uh, money would go to Gates, but he had a couple of unique provisions. Uh, one of them was that the money has to be spent within 10 years. Right. He did not want building, as he called it, bureaucracies to handle the money. No endowments put it to work right away, quick as possible. Well, people have uh, different visions, and that's what makes the world turn around. How do you look at giving as a part of wealth? I mean, what is the responsibility? What about the whole concept of uh, social entrepreneurship? Is there a more effective way to give it, a more efficient way to give money? Well, if, uh, if, you, if you recognize, if people recognize that philanthropy is meeting the needs and wants of other people, commerce is meeting the needs and wants of other people. Skill sets may be different, but they're not polar opposites. They're two sides of the same coin. Mm -hmm. That's why often, or many times, effective entrepreneurs in commerce become very good in, uh, in uh, charitable giving, in philanthropy. Mm -hmm. You take John D. Rockefeller. Right. Well, we've got Rockefeller University in terms of scientific research, University of Chicago, Williamsburg, Grand Teton National Park. So uh, trying to figure out, okay, instead of just writing a check, maybe you don't have time, so you trust others and write a check to them. But if you have the time, okay, how do you make sure that these resources are put to effective use and uh, put the same kind of diligence, same kind of mindset, same kind of inventiveness and imagination you did in commerce to uh, figuring out, okay, how do we make a difference in the world of philanthropy? Positive difference. So uh, you're probably most associated with money of anybody probably on the planet right now. If someone gave you three wishes, what would Steve Forbes wish for? You got a magic lamp, you got three wishes. What do you want? Well, uh, first and foremost, uh, for, for this country, the United States, to be a strong, healthy, prosperous, and have a sense of purpose again. Mm -hmm. uh, then uh, immediate family, uh, health and happiness there. And then maybe some health and happiness for yours truly. As I get older, uh, things don't uh, hold up as well. As somebody said, if you don't feel some aches and pains after the age of 50, it's probably because you're dead. True. True. You know, once we get past money and we talk about family and, uh, you know, how important is passion and purpose? How, how do we find that and how do we make that work in our lives? Well, everyone has a knack for something. Uh, it doesn't mean you're going to, if you're going to love tennis, it doesn't mean you're going to go to Wimbledon right. or you have a knack for uh, software writing, you're going to become Bill Gates or something. But uh, if you have a knack for something and you have a passion for it, that makes life a lot easier, where a job actually doesn't just mean meeting the needs of life, but something you look forward to each day, something where you feel you have a purpose, you're doing something well. Uh, that uh, that has a, the, gives you the intangibles that uh, makes life just more than looking for the next weekend. I think it's great, you know, and in one of the things that we have in our society and in, in the environment we have is success brings you the ability to do what you want with whom you want to do it. And if you do that, um, you know, you win because uh, I think it's so important that people find their passion and pursue it because if you don't, you're going to be competing against someone that does. You're doing a job and they're loving what they do and they'll beat you every time because uh, they're better at it. They just love it. Well, but also because their mind is always working on it in a positive way, uh, figuring out how to do those things a little differently. We all know in sports, it's oftentimes nanoseconds that make the difference between the gold medal and uh, being an also-ran. Yep. Well, same, same thing in, uh, in life. Uh, if you see those things that add up, they do accumulate over time and comes from passion and having a, a real desire to do it better.
Steve, there are people watching us all around the world now, and they've watched this movie, and they're watching this DVD, and they're trying to figure out if, if the message is true, if we can really have our wishes, if dreams do come true. And theirs certainly isn't. They get up every day and go do something they don't enjoy with people they don't respect for money that's not sufficient. What would be their first step toward going from where they are to where they want to be? Well, if they have the opportunity is to uh, step back and say, okay, if I had a blank sheet of paper, what would I be doing each day? And don't say nothing, because that's the hardest job in the world. Figure out what you have uh, a passion for and being willing to apply the discipline to achieve that passion. When we go to a sporting match, for example, uh, we see the end result of uh, people, many people who've uh, done a lot of sweat, a lot of training, uh, a lot of passion to uh, achieve their uh, abilities but we don't see all the work that goes behind the scenes. So if you're not prepared to do the grunt work, the scut work, uh, the discipline, and that's why it's often said people who uh, have uh, work hard to, in terms of a disciplined way end up being freer yeah, than yeah. those who don't have to do anything because then they can't do anything. True. True. It's, uh, I thought Buffett's thing was great when he talked about his... Uh, legacy for his kids. I want to give them enough so they can do anything, but not enough so they can do nothing. And I thought that was such a powerful statement for all of us, you know. And uh, I think uh, the message of this movie and the book, it all starts when there's that little glimmer of hope or possibility. You begin to believe that maybe that could happen. You don't have to be convinced. You don't have to see the finish line. Uh, you don't have to have all the answers, all the lights don't have to be green before you leave the house. It's just, maybe that's possible. Maybe something out there is better than this. And if you take that first step, then you can see far enough to take the next and the next and the next. And, uh, and then be prepared for setbacks. Yeah. Uh, life never goes in a straight line. There, there, there will be trade-offs. But if uh, you realize it's not my way or no way, or I didn't succeed, therefore I do not try again, uh, you end up being a, a better person, more seasoned, more mature, and a uh, better chance to uh, achieve that ultimate goal, even if it isn't a straight line. So when we pursue our passion and our end goal is, is true happiness, fulfillment, what is true happiness? What, what is true happiness to Steve Forbes? Well, on a daily basis, it's getting something done and doing it well, whether it's a piece of copy or dealing with a personnel problem. But in a larger sense, uh, you do are concerned. What about my family? What, what about their problems? So you, you worry about a lot of things. There's no such thing as a worry-free life. It means you don't have obligations. It means you don't take on responsibilities. So uh, understand that uh, happiness is not just a bliss and no worry. It's uh, having the uh, maturity to deal with those in a way where uh, you can get some satisfaction on a job well done. See, there are people watching us that uh, think the way I probably did at one point in my life is that Steve Forbes can't have anything to worry about. You know, everything's got to be great if you're Steve Forbes. Depending on your religion, the only time you don't worry is when uh, you've left this earth. <laughs> Understand. And then even then, some of us are going to have some things to worry about or at least explain. Well, the, the optimist view, you won't have anything to worry about. That's very true. Very true. Well, as always, I want to thank you. I had, uh, and counting you among my friends has been a uh, just a humbling experience for me. I'd, I've never asked you to do anything, including this uh, movie and this uh, little DVD feature here and everything we've done that you haven't done. And uh, I've met a lot of high-profile people, I guess, and uh, some of them I wish I'd never met because I admired them much more from afar, if you will. And uh, you know, you're the real Steve Forbes, and if because because nobody's that good an actor, certainly not you. So I, I am... Uh, I'm sticking with my day job. <laughs> yeah, I would if I were, yes. But no, I am, I am humbled by, uh, you know, your, your endorsements and the things you've done to help me get my message out. Because if I have a purpose, that's it. And it, uh, and it makes me money, and the money allows me to get the message out more, and getting the message out more makes more money, and it's, a, it's an upward spiral. And you have helped me and so many others do that. Well, uh... My admiration for you is unbounded, and uh, as you've demonstrated, some things you can't help in life, but as you pointed out early on, it's what you do about it that counts, and you're a constant inspiration on that. Look forward, do what you can with what you have, and uh, amazing things can happen. Thank you, my friend. Thank you. Appreciate it.